Hi, everybody. Welcome into Buy Your Time. Harry McCullough here. Uh, look, we are headed straight into the holidays. It's Thanksgiving is right around the corner. And, you know, right after that, it'll be uh, Christmas, New Year's. And then, of course, we get in uh, Mardi Gras around here. So we, we got about the next five months of holidays. But uh, it's always time to have fun with family and friends. But uh, we don't forget our other friends, and that would be our pets. And Valerie Robinson with the uh, Tierman Parish Animal Shelter is here with a little panda. So, uh, My little friend. Yeah. So uh, tell me about her. She is an adorable two-month-old uh, dilute calico uh, kitten. So her name is Hershey. If you can see, the reason she's called a dilute is because instead of being black and orange, she's gray and a tan color. So it almost looks like she's been bleached, like she's diluted. <laughs> so she's a dilute calico named Hershey, and she's a little bit of a spitfire. So if she if she behaves and participates yeah, today, I'll be happy. She'll be good girl. <laughs> she she blue eyes too. Mm -hmm. huh? Uh, pretty, pretty uh, cat. Uh, part of, of what y'all do out there. So you, you, you say you love this time of year. It slows down a little bit, but you never really slow down, right? We never really slow down to the point where we are slow. We see less intake in the colder months instead of the summer months. Summer months are just you know, treacherous. Um, we see so many animals because of the long breeding season that we have. And so part of the, the mission that we have is to spare or neuter and spay or neuter as much as possible. And especially outside cats and the community cat program that I come on and I talk about often is one big piece of that. So everyone that I encounter, no matter where I go, says, oh my gosh, you know, we have cats, we have cats. Um, and that's one of the things that, you know, the last few years after we were able to change the laws and implement our community cat program, we were able to start helping those people um, with positive outcomes for cats, which basically uh, the community cat program says, we'll take your cat in, right, for free, spay or neuter it, vaccinate it, ear tip it. That's And that ear tip signifies that the cat has been spay or neutered so right, that we don't, don't have do to, that. we don't have to do it times. again. <laughs> so um, that's the universal sign. So anywhere you go, if you go to New York right now and you see an ear tip cat, that means the exact same thing. Um, so it's not just here in Terrebonne, it's not just here in Homa. This is a, a national program um, that most shelters are on board with today because it helps curb the population. As as you know, we have so many yeah. that we just can't keep up with the volume. We need to reduce that by spaying and neutering right. them. And it kind of so, exploded after Ida, right? Because a lot of did. cats we, were just out there and exactly. people were all over. So displaced cats were one of the biggest issues that we saw after Hurricane Ida. We dealt with a lot of the dog situation being abandoned and whatnot. But after Hurricane Ida, the the it blew up in a good way, bad way, but good way, because yeah. we were able to identify those needs. Um, people came to us because we were the resource within the parish that said, hey, I have all these cats. You know, caregivers were displaced. They didn't come back. So they kind of just had cats everywhere. Um, and they were there before, but we didn't always know about where they were. People were coming forward because they knew we were a resource at that point. Right. And we now have the ability to spay or neuter them for free. Yeah, uh, so that's good. So anybody that has an outside cat can yep. can just show up and Free. you guys They can contact out. the shelter, 873-6709. Um, um, they can either email us or go on our website um, to get the contact information. But essentially, it's a free service. If they come to the animal shelter, they can drop it off. We'll spay or neuter it, and they can pick it right back Hershey up. Hershey was born in captivity, or um, Hershey, Hershey dropped off? <laughs> Hershey came to us. She came to us as a, a part of a litter that like was very, very thick. <laughs> <laughs> she came to us as a part of a litter. She has siblings back at the shelter so if you're interested mm -hmm. if Hershey gets adopted there's others um so they she came to us very sick um and one of our employees fostered her and her siblings um until she was able to get well and now she's back at the shelter ready for adoption yeah no it's so cool and and cats can do that and they they also can live on their own pretty good mm -hmm. right so they can multiply and and eat yep. and those kind of things Coyotes, I noticed some of my neighborhoods, we started seeing coyotes and we're seeing less and less cats. Would that be an attractant when you have a bunch of cats around that maybe you might get wildlife kind of coming in to go after so the cats? You, you're going to see a coyotes. Coyotes have been in our parish and across the all country over, yeah, all over urban now yeah um and so it's a it's a real thing that coyotes exist and what happens oh, is them. yeah when we see um development of land and we're knocking down more trees and their territory gets messed up but also if the the, the food supply is low they will search out into neighborhoods right. for um outside cats small dogs etc um so there the tip there would be to keep an eye on your pet you know right. obviously small dogs um 
And your community cats are definitely susceptible to that. That's a possibility. Right. Um, there are some tips on our website if somebody's interested in learning more about coyotes and wildlife. Um, they, we do have some information on there. It's tpcg.org slash animal shelter. Those things are like superheroes. I don't know if you ever, but you know, I'm walking my dogs and one of them comes by and my dogs think they can be tough. Mm. And those things take two steps and they're like a block away. Go on, yeah, very fast. And you're fast. like, whoa, those things are amazing. <laughs> and you know, we think we might have lost some cats there. Probably I just so. didn't know if they attracted them or if not necessarily if, attracted because they'll eat bunnies, they'll eat, you know, squirrels, other, other animals as well. But if there's an outside animal, yeah. they are susceptible to a hawk, a coyote, you know, anything. Right. So uh, you said, the program has been a success do you see that just by the number of animals that show up you know for, at your place exactly so we are seeing an intake decrease um, for the animals that are staying in our shelter and an increase for the animals that are coming through for spay or neuter if that makes sense right so animals coming through the doors so that's how you know the programs work exactly yeah. so specifically for spay or neuter we've seen that number go up um, because people are responding to that. They trust us. They, they want mm -hmm. their animals, sure. outdoor cats fixed. And so they see this program as, a, you know, as, as valuable as we feel like it is. And they say, yes, I'm coming. You know, I want to do that. But then we see a decrease in the other animals that you know, are having to stay in our shelter. So they're right. kind of cycling through. You know, so it's kind of an up and down, but increase in the benefit. Yeah. What's the census out there? Which, which, which kind Oh, of... gosh, Harry, we have so many animals <laughs> um, to tell you what we take in annually well, would capacity? give a good ind indication. So we take in about fifty five hundred animals a year. Oh, wow. and that is every year. And that's hard to, to believe like <laughs> really? what that actually looks like. But yes. <laughs> All right. We'll take a break. Of course, more Valerie Robinson right here on Bite Time. Today's social media segment is brought to you by Carabon General Health Systems, Modern Technology, and Timeless Caring. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights. Everybody, welcome back to Body Time. I am Harry McCullough. Valerie Robinson is the Terrebonne Animal Shelter uh, Director, and she's spending some time with us. And we've been talking about kitties. Uh, but before the break, we were talking about 5,500 animals a year to come through your program. Uh, what I found amazing, and you shared with me in the break, is what they call a save rate. Can you explain that and tell me how we've done as a shelter in the last 20 years, maybe? Certainly. So um, 21 years ago, when I kind of stepped into the shelter, we did not have the programs in place that we do today. And so the community definitely needed help. Um, and so our save rate, basically, in an animal shelter environment, what you see is statistics that tell you where your animal shelter in your community is is kind of what they're kind of doing. And so back then, 21 years ago, we probably had a save rate of somewhere around 11%, meaning that a large majority of animals did not leave alive. And so today, after implementing adoption programs, foster programs, all the things that I talk about mm -hmm. when I come here, especially our community cat program has changed that to a, a, somewhere around 91% oh, wow. in 2022. So 91% in 2022 were saved, meaning they had positive outcomes. They left the building. Um, those animals that didn't were usually for medical reasons beyond hope or right. beyond help and behavioral reasons, unsafe dogs or animals that were unsafe to right. return back to the community in some sort of way. So that's, well, since 2001, so I guess when, or 2002 when you came in. So, uh, no, that's an amazing rate and a great turnaround. Well, were we embarrassed at that time? I don't remember being upset about it, but. So when, uh, you know, should long, we, we should have 21 been, years ago, yeah. um, there was a lot of discussion before, right before I started with the Humane Society and whatnot 
Um, so being there for 21 years, I've had to, the privilege of being You've able to it. see that progress. Yeah. You know, we, my team, they're excellent. They're, I, I say this all the time, but there's no better humans on earth. You can't right. convince me, um, than, than animal shelter workers who right. are going in for not the pay, you right. know, they're going in because of the love of animals and they're, they're, you know, helping animals who don't have alternative, right. you know, help. And so day in, day out, finding programs, you know, creating more, getting a, our council and our administration on board, a lot, all of the things that we've done equal safe yeah. rates, higher yeah. safe rates, and more the help. program helps and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we've talked about kitty cats. Let's talk about some puppies that, okay. that are available, right? Right? Yes, I always bring kitties. Um, <laughs> but today I brought some pictures at least of yeah. some dogs. If they want to show those, I can talk a little bit about those. So Reba is one of our what we call $5 dogs. She has been in the shelter over 30 days. So that qualifies her for a lower adoption fee of only $5. You can't go to lunch for $5. Right. So $5 is all it takes to adopt Reba. She is a Coonhound Rottweiler mix, about eight years old, and she probably weighs about 45 pounds. She is good with other dogs nice and then there's Kara Kara is also a five dollar dog she has been in the shelter for over 30 days waiting on love and so she's a pit mix pit bull mix and she's about three years old she weighs about 50 pounds and she is great with other dogs Sargent is our tripod. If you look closely <laughs> at that picture, you can see that Sargent is a tripod. So he came in injured with an injured leg and our veterinarian um, had to remove his back leg. And so he's all sewn up now and everything's great. He's ready for a home. He weighs about 41 pounds. He looks really big in that picture, but he's only about 41 pounds. Does he get around good? He gets around great. So tripods, what we lovingly refer to as tripods, tripods, sometimes you don't even notice. Most right. people won't even notice unless you really look um, because they do very well. They adapt very, very well to um, missing missing legs. And he's only about 11 months old. And so he's good with other dogs as well. Lady, oh, sweet lady just came back from, um, she tried to get adopted and the, it didn't work out. So she came back. She's a sweet girl. And uh, for her, she is uh, a coonhound mix and three years old, about 33 pounds. So some of these pictures can be deceived um, 33 pounds is a medium sized dog. Yeah. She's, she also loves other dogs too. Callie Ella, she gets, she's so special. She gets two <laughs> names. <laughs> she, um, is about two and a half years old and she is about 31 pounds. And she came in with her sister who got adopted this morning. So she's just kind of hanging out at the shelter, waiting to get adopted as well. She's a shepherd mix and sweet girl. You can tell by that smile that yeah. she's a sweet girl. Pretty job. Benito, who doesn't love that name? Benito is also a $5 dog, meaning that his adoption fee is $5. And he's a lab mix, about a year old, weighs about 41 pounds. So a lot of these dogs are medium-sized dogs. Yeah, 41 pounds. Cuervo is a little guy in that picture. He is staring at us like, what is going on? Cuervo is a little guy. He has some skin issues going on that we're treating at the shelter. So he is working through that coat to become this beautiful you know like a dog mix. he is a chihuahua mix yeah he's a chihuahua mix um and he's about two years old and he weighs 16 pounds <laughs> bagel is also one of uh, these all are sweet dogs i can't say that enough <laughs> all sweet dogs um a little pity mix bagel and he's um five he's about 45 pounds and he loves other dogs as well nyla girl is also um she came into the shelter um, with another dog. She is um, about seven months old, so she's still a baby. Um, she weighs about 39 pounds, so she's got a little bit more growing, but not much. Um, she is heartworm negative, so she's good to go, and she loves other dogs as well. Her nice. smile is infectious. She definitely is one of those happy little dogs. When her ears yeah. perk up, she obviously she's yeah. a shepherd mix. When her ears perk up, she looks a lot of like a, a a shepherd um, when she's got both ears. Nyla, mm -hmm. New York, Los Angeles, New York, LA or Louisiana. <laughs> uh, Britney Spears had a restaurant up in Kentwood. Nyla, Nyla. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, so bro is, bro. <laughs> he's a bro. Come at me, bro. He's, come at me, bro. He's a bro. His, <laughs> his, uh, he's a lab mix, about three and a half years old. He's about 50 pounds. So he's a large dog, but he's not super big, but his name is bro. And he's kind of, his personality, personality reflects his name as well. Right. And then Aurora is another, again, I can't say enough that we have some sweet dogs. She's a $5 dog. So she's been at the shelter more than 30 days. She's actually currently in a foster home right now. So somebody helped us out by taking her out of the shelter so that she can get some socialization and some work. Um, she's about five years old and she's about 53 pounds. 
she is potty trained, so that's a benefit. That's awesome. um, yeah, who doesn't love a potty trained dog? And she's good with other dogs. All right. We'll talk about how you can adopt these dogs when we come back right here on Bike Time. Today's social media segment is brought to you by Alford and Associates for all of your insurance needs. CIS, Cardiovascular Institute of the South, the highest quality cardiovascular care available. Barker Honda, the Barker family tradition of quality. Hey everybody, welcome back to Bayou Time. Harry McCullough here. We're spending our last segment with Valerie Robinson, the Animal Shelter Director of Terrebonne Parish. Uh, we looked at those beautiful dogs. And so if somebody's interested in either being a foster or an owner, how would they go about that? Very easily. We have a process that we match pets and people. So it's not necessarily the old days of animal shelters used to be very judgmental and critical and, you know, trying to make sure that this is going to be the perfect forever life. And what we learned is that when you match people and pets, it works out. Yeah. Um, so what we usually do is tell people that if they're interested in something, come to meet the dog, make sure it's a match for them, for what they're looking for. We like matching with lifestyle and activity level and things like that. Um, and they can simply do that by just telling us they're interested online, which is everybody's, you know, technology mm -hmm. nowadays. It's the way sure. to go. Um, it's terrible. It's tpcg.org slash adopt me. Um, that's the questionnaire that they fill out that says, this is what I'm looking at. This is who I'm interested in. They can go to our Facebook page and they can see these animals that I just we just posted. Um, and there's links there that they will tell them where to go. Essentially, if they go on our website and click adoption, they can look at all of these the animals that we have available for adoption and they can submit that um, online questionnaire as well. And then come to the shelter as a lot well, of good obviously. puppies. And you said most of them work well together. And obviously y'all look for that too, right? We do. They have to be able to work with other dogs. Exactly. And so what we do is when an animal first comes into the shelter, we do for dogs, we do a behavior assessment, which is a very quick snapshot of kind of like with this, you know, learning the dog as much as we can to see how it does with food, other dogs and things like that. Um, and then once that's done, we have a medical exam done. So we have a vet team full, you know, uh, veterinarian, veterinarian technician that's there to make sure that the animals are healthy. They don't have anything potentially contagious. Um, and so once that's done, then they get placed up for adoption. And that sounds long, but it usually takes, excuse me, <clears throat> usually takes a matter of a day or two to get all of that done. So dogs, we move very quickly. Um, most of the, <clears throat> excuse me, most of the time, um, those dogs are, you know, happy, healthy dogs. People think that shelter dogs are broken. They're happy, healthy dogs. It's just a matter of them, the circumstances that Bad landed life. them in the yeah. shelter. Something, something happened. And yeah, what our community has been through the last mm -hmm. couple of years. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, let's talk about weather. Uh, we don't have a bunch of snow here, but it gets cold and pets shouldn't be outside. When it gets cold, I get that a lot too. Everybody's like, well, it's, we live in South Louisiana. Why do we have to worry about that? Um, we do. The answer is we do because every once in a while we'll get that cold snap that comes through. And because we live in the South and it's mostly hot, we don't think about that. And so, you know, please don't let your dog stay outside. I don't think that was taken in. Uh, it was not <laughs> taken here, <laughs> not here, but I, you know, I tell you that it's well, one of those things <laughs> we did every once in a while we'll get a snow, but we, you know, we get it where it drops, Still you know, cold, below. right. And so a few years back, we um, were seeing that as a problem with animal control, having to go out and respond to cases where people did leave their animals out. Um, and so what we did was we enacted a law that said if your animal is outside, it cannot be be below 32 degrees having your animal outside. And if it is outside, you have to provide it with heat. So that basically says you can't just keep your dog outside in 20 degree weather and think that that's okay. And so that's something that we, you know, enforce during the cold snaps that come through. Um, and so it's it's definitely very important to make sure that we're not forgetting our friends outside. If it's, you know, if it's cold outside for you, it's probably cold outside for them, unless you have a husky or <laughs> some right, other right. breed that's Those shelters, those little igloo, those little outdoor things, does that work good enough? Or? It's n not in the cold temperatures. And not in the hot you it works good enough to keep the rain off of a dog but shelters are not truly meant to cool uh, you know to yeah. keep a dog cool or to keep a dog warm it blocks the wind at best um but in the summertime we see them create a hot box you know it, it doesn't provide the what they actually need it provides shelter which 
again, mostly is for rain and wind, but not in right. all of the elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, very interesting. And then with Thanksgiving coming up, uh, obviously we always cook too much. That's one of our <laughs> local traditions, right? <laughs> right. So you go, oh, there's a dog. Let me just give him yep. stuff. It, probably not as always healthy for the dog. Right? It's not. And Harry, I was going to come on here and say, don't feed your animal leftovers. But then I realized that I am probably talking to the wrong <laughs> audience, that South Louisiana, oh, yeah. we love our food and food and is a, love. Right. And in the animal world, like we know that food is not love because overfeeding your dog creates right. is health issues and whatever. Right. But in reality, we know that people love their animals and sure. they're going to want to sneak a little Give bit of this. Right. So, <laughs> I, so I decided to come with a different approach to say, let me tell you what they can and cannot have. Okay. So we kind of uh, you know, put together a little bit of of a list uh, if they want to show those. So there's some things that they cannot not. have. And we put that list up here so that people can see what not to feed their animals. So the turkey bones are like chicken bones? Chicken bones and turkey bones are terrible right. for dogs. Never, never, never give them turkey bones. Are, they Skin. have Skin. Even the skin is a no-no. I know, I know. We all want to do that. Um, so we don't want to get the stuffings. Raisins, grapes are, and raisins are um, a bad deal. I know it's easy to toss one to your dog and it's cute, but it, please don't do that. Right. Uh, a couple of other things that you probably you know know already, but you know chocolate um, and those candied yams. It, usually, if you have if you're adding something to that dish that's sweet or whatnot, you want to stay away from that. Nuts also are a no-no. Um, and please don't let them indulge in alcoholic beverages. Oh, some like beer. <laughs> <laughs> some of them do, but you're, that's not good for them. They, everybody's got to get through the holidays. Yeah, and the bread, <laughs> the bread dough um, is is the dough, the yeast dough. Yeah, I was about to say. So what? Bread is a reason is okay. for that. Is it the way right. they digest the things? Right, right, exactly. And that some of the, the those things are really, really bad for their guts. Their gastrointestinal mm -hmm. intestinal issues will be created because of that. Corn on the cob is the other one that I wanted to mention. That is some that we've seen even at our shelter that's a no bueno those get stuck they the corn the and the cob they, they eat the cob and those get stuck and they will block everything and, right. a, and a, a blocked dog is a painful dog that could oh, cause yeah. death i mean it's it's terrible so don't no corn in the cob yeah well uh, again uh, hershey's been magnificent <laughs> she's been awesome she did. she's a good she little star and thanks for all the hard work you do there Thank you. so again i can just call you guys from the website and and Right. Our there. website, tpcg.org slash animal shelter has a ton of information on it. On the right side, you can see all kind of good info. All right, Valerie, thank you so much for yep, joining thank us. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back with more body time after this.